I think there are very few things on the planet that offer the utility, the necessity, and the scarcity that silver does. In a world of blown up asset prices, it's the most undervalued asset on the planet. So being right sometimes means you're wrong until you're right. And I've experienced that a lot. Andy Schechtman highlights the value of silver in industries such as solar panels and battery-powered vehicles, where its utility is unmatched by any other asset. Despite being undervalued and subjected to price manipulation, the speaker believes that silver represents the best value in the investment universe. I think people understand that the Fed is trapped, that they're caught, and that they're caught in a quandary of death by hyperinflation or death by depression. I think people are realizing that and people are buying gold and silver right now, not to get wealthy, but because it is and represents wealth. And in a world of asset prices that are so crazy overvalued, there's nothing on the planet that offers the argument that silver does. Of course, the price action doesn't support it, the manipulation surrounding it. But from a standpoint of utility in industry, where solar panels are supposed to double or triple in the next year or two, or the same thing with battery powered vehicles and in a digital and green application or world where digital and green applications are expanding, there isn't an asset on the planet that offers what silver does in the light of everything being blown up, silver is still under half of what it was. So that's why people are buying because they're afraid, they see inflation, they see the frailty of their investments and they realize silver is, even though it hasn't expressed itself yet, represents maybe the best value in the investment universe. Don't see something, anything that offers the value that silver does. Andy Schechtman discusses the possibility of a de-dollarization movement and its potential impact on the value of silver. He suggests that the concentration of short positions in the commodity traded on COMEX is due to efforts to hold down silver prices, despite its extraordinary fundamentals. He predicts that a challenge to the dollar's hegemony will lead to the downfall of price manipulation and the rise in the value of silver. My asset portfolio, which is almost entirely gold and silver, because I don't see a safer place to put it. And along the way, it, it's tough. You have to have strong fingertips. You have to hang on. You have to trust your conviction. And ask yourself, why is it the most concentrated short position in any commodity traded on COMEX? Why do they exert so much effort to hold it down? when the fundamentals are so extraordinary. And I think one of the things that make it difficult for silver to express itself is the dollar hegemon, where the dollar rules the roost and the government behind it pulls the strings. But what just what happens if all of a sudden the dollar loses its singular world reserve status? What happens if Saudi Arabia, who is already in negotiations with China to sell oil for Yuan, just like Nigeria is already doing, what happens if we see an accentuation of what's going on with Russia? How about the Belt Road Initiative with China connecting 85% or 80% of human population? And now there's this new route between Iran and India. What we are seeing is a de-dollarization, a move away from the dollar hegemony. And when that snaps, when that happens, things like the ability to manipulate the COMEX price, I think will be a thing of the past. And the only reason all of these nations aren't bitching about it right now is because that is what they've been transitioning into. They have been the ones accumulating gold and silver. They have been the ones quietly de-dollarizing. So they, they play along the game. If you can't beat them, join them type of thing until they are able to beat them. And they'll beat them by, I believe, challenging the dollar for singular world reserve status. Andy Schechtman acknowledges that waiting for the downfall of the dollar and the rise in silver prices is not a fun experience, but they believe that in the end, they will be proven right. They express confidence in the utility, necessity, and scarcity of silver in a world of blown-up asset prices and consider it the most undervalued asset on the planet. The Chinese digital yuan has done close to $10 billion in transactions over the last year. With all of these countries coalescing together, Russia, China, India, South Africa, the likelihood, I believe, and these are all the biggest producers of, of gold and silver in the world, the biggest accumulators of it as well. What I believe will happen at some point is that they will challenge the dollar. They will issue a gold-backed or a commodity-backed BRICS nation's currency on the back of 
the success that the Chinese have already had with their Belt Road Initiative and their Digital Yuan. When something like that happens, when the dollar loses its hegemony, when the dollar loses its ability through sanctions and, and edict and governmental decree to control the markets, that's when it snaps overnight. Now, it's not fun waiting for it. In the end, we'll be proven right. And I think there are very few things on the planet that offer the utility, the necessity, and the scarcity that silver does. In a world of blown up asset prices, it's the most undervalued asset on the planet. So being right sometimes means you're wrong until you're right. And I've experienced that a lot. Yeah, we may not have been right yet, but we will be. Andy Sheckman discusses the deal made in 1974 between Henry Kissinger and Saudi Arabia to value oil in dollars globally through OPEC. He argues that the dollar's strength as the world's reserve currency is coming to an end, as evidenced by Russia's joint military cooperation agreement with Saudi Arabia and Nigeria. In 1974, Henry Kissinger struck a deal with the Saudis to value oil in dollars globally through OPEC, and for that we would protect the Saudi kingdom. The fact that Russia signed a joint military cooperation agreement with Saudi Arabia the day after we left Afghanistan, and the next day did it with Nigeria, signals the beginning of the end of things that we've seen in our lifetime. In our lifetime, we've known nothing but dollar hegemony, dollar strength, and the world reserve currency. I would argue those days are coming to an end. And so that's when things change. When people are looking at alternatives, look at every other asset class out there and forget about what I'm saying about the dollar losing its singular petrodollar status, but what happens if the Fed is true to its worth? And the house prices start to exponentially decrease and the stocks and bonds start to decrease. Gold is near its high despite the interest rate hike. That's true, interest rates and Gold are inversely correlated. However, it's real interest rates and the price of gold meet the inverse relationship between real interest rates and gold. Andy Sheckman focuses on gold and silver as logical assets that meet the test of economics, mathematics, and old school logic. He argues that silver is a depleted asset that is hugely needed in industry and is just disappearing. Gold is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But remember, there's a 90% correlation between gold and silver throughout all of history. So if gold leads the way, typically silver will catch up and surpass it in performance. It's a depleted asset. It's massively needed in industry. It's hugely accumulated monetarily. And it's just disappearing. But in the end, mathematics, logic, and economics will prevail. And that's the best we can all do, is try to find something that's logical, that meets the test of economics, meets the test of mathematics, meets the test of old school logic. And all of, you could check all three of those boxes. But sometimes logic and outcome in this crazy world have been inversely correlated until they're not. And that till they're not will happen. It's just a matter of when. Some people would say with all the inflation we have right now and the craziness, why hasn't happened yet? And that is because this is all about dollar hegemony. We are entering a period of time, the Great Reset, or whatever you want to call it, where the dollar is teetering, where the system that we've built upon a mountain of debt cannot handle a rise in interest rate. And it's either death by hyperinflation or death by depression. Take your pick, one or the other. And in the end, I do believe that you will be proven right. Gold and silver will be the last men standing as everything else tries to find fair value in a world where price discovery is all but impossible, even in gold and silver right now. As we come to the end of this video, I hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. If you have any thoughts or questions about the topics discussed in this video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content. See you in the next one.